we report a case in which we perform a transeptal mitral valve and valve procedure. Our patient is a 74-year-old man with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and atrial fibrillation. He had a prior bioprosthetic mitral valve replacement with a number 33 St. Jude Epic valve and a prior tricuspid repair with a number 34 contour ring. He presented with increasing dyspnea on exertion despite being on diuretics. He has a depressed left ventricular function with an EF of 45% and moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. His STS score for reoperative surgical mitral valve replacement was 6.2%. He was evaluated by our heart team, and the decision was made to move forward with a transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Pre-procedural planning is key to the success of this procedure. Transesophageal echocardiography is performed in order to confirm the severity and ideology of the mitral valve disease. In our patient, TEE demonstrated that our patient had severe mitral regurgitation and a flail prosthetic leaflet with a posteriorly directed jet. Gated cardiac CT scans are performed in these patients in order to confirm valve sizing. Our patient had a mitral valve annulus area of 680 millimeters squared, and the placement of the virtual 29 millimeter Sapien 3 valve shows adequate sizing and fit. In addition, CT scans aid in the identification of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. In our patient, the neo-LVOT area measured 788 millimeters squared, which made him low risk for left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. The valve and valve mitral application is an invaluable resource in guiding the properties of the bioprosthetic valve such as bioprosthesis height, stent ID, and true ID, and which transcatheter valve size can be safely implanted in a particular bioprosthesis. Our patient had a number 33 epic bioprosthesis. The true ID of this valve is 28.5 millimeters, and the recommended transcatheter valve for a valve and valve procedure is a 29 millimeter S3. During implantation, it is recommended that the central marker of the S3 should be placed a few millimeters ventricular to the sewing ring marker fluoroscopically. This procedure was performed in a hybrid OR room under general anesthesia, and the procedure was performed with TEE guidance. An eight front sheath was inserted in the left femoral vein and a transvenous pacemaker was advanced through this sheath and positioned in the right ventricular apex. After right femoral venous access was obtained, one preclosed suture in the femoral vein is deployed using proglide, and a 12 French sheath was inserted. An O32 wire was then advanced up from the IVC to the SVC. After a 3,000 unit heparin bolus was administered, a transeptal puncture was performed under TEE guidance in a high and posterior position in the fossa ovalis. The bolus sheath, dilator, and needle are advanced into the left atrium. The dilator and needle are removed and the bolus sheath is left across the septum. An additional bolus of heparin was administered for a total of 100 units per kilogram for a target ACT of 250 to 300 seconds. Here, on TEE, we can see the bailus needle tenting the interatrial septum prior to puncture and can measure the height of our needle above the mitral valve annulus. The goal is to be high and posterior on the septum. We can also observe the transeptal puncture on TEE. After the bailus sheath is across the septum, a protract pigtail wire is advanced into the left atrium and the bailus sheath is removed. A steropologilis sheath and dilator are then advanced over the protract wire into the left atrium. Subsequently, the protract wire and agilis dilator are removed. 
The gyllid sheath is then directed towards the mitral valve and a multi-purpose catheter and tiger wire is used to cross the mitral valve. An O35 comforter wire is advanced through the multi-purpose catheter and is left in the left ventricle. An atrial septostomy is then performed using a 12 mm peripheral balloon that is inflated and flossed across the interatrial septum. Next, the Agilis sheath is removed and an Edwards E sheath is advanced into the IVC over the comforter wire. The 29 mm S3 was aligned on the delivery balloon in the IVC. The system was then advanced across the septum and positioned across the mitral valve. The sewing ring of the bioprosthetic valve should be identified and is marked with a red arrow on this slide. The goal is to align the transcatheter valve with this ring. Because of the angle of approach, the transcatheter valve position may have to be adjusted during deployment. The valve is slowly deployed in order to allow for fine adjustments in position. The final position of the valve should be approximately 80% in the left ventricle and 20% in the left atrium. Here we can see the final position of the 29 mm S3. The valve is well seated across the original bioprosthetic valve. The transcatheter valve deployment system and sheath were removed and the right femoral venous perclose was secured.